Welcome back, Love Nation. This is Nina. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you to everybody that has been coming to my channel. Like this video, share this video, and hit that notification bell so you know when I drop my next one. We're going to get straight into this. Now, you guys remember when I was covering the Tory Lanes in the state of California trial, I had personally had questions about why the driver in the car never came forward during court. We now have a written affidavit. Uh, thank you and shout out to Mobs World for putting this document out. I will be reading uh, most of this document that basically is telling you guys a different version of what happened that literally is putting Kelsey in the seat as the person that actually did it. And honestly, if you look at the facts that was put out there, the you know, the issues that I had with how he got convicted, I honestly never thought it was a clear-cut case that we could just put every finger on Tory. And I'm glad that this finally came out. Now, why we why did this driver not come out before? I just really don't know. I'm not in that man's head. However, I'm glad that these documents are coming out now. I always found it to be a little suspicious that the fourth person in the car that literally was a first-hand witness to what happened at Kylie's house, first-hand witness to what happened in the car, first-hand witness that saw what happened and why this got really chaotic. I'm very shocked that he was not literally one of the first people put on the witness stand. I just feel like the seriousness of what Tory was charged with, that honestly, we should have been looking at the one person in the car who was the driver slash bodyguard that was not directly involved with the actual altercation before this man got convicted. And honestly, I mean, that's just, to me, the most logical thing to do when you're facing criminal charges that everybody directly, you know, with direct knowledge, uh, speak up. So anyway, he finally spoke up and these documents are out there again. Thank you to mobs world. I'm about to read it. Leave your commentary below the very short, sweet and to the point and sheds light on the situation. So again, this is your update. We're getting straight into these legal documents right now and thumbs up this video guys all right you guys we're going to get straight into this document concerning the tory lane's uh case and i just want to show this this is courtesy of mobs world for putting this document out there i have personally had several questions as to why we never actually heard from the driver in this case However, we are hearing from him now. His name is Jaquan Smith. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Now, again, we're going to get straight into this document because I had actually always had questions as to why he was not front and center in this particular case as Daystar Peterson, better known as Tory Lanes, uh, why his driver or the driver of the car was not at the trial speaking his truths. I had always had an issue with that, especially because of the seriousness of what Tory Lanez was charged with. I always think it's best to hear directly from witnesses that could have been directly there. And by him being directly there, I'm talking about the driver of the car. I actually found it very egregious that he was not actually at the court. However, we do have an actual statement from him now and so I want to update you this is very short so I'm just going to go ahead and read it this is in the court of appeal of the state of California second appellate district division three Daystar Peterson petitioner versus Superior Court of Los Angeles responded and this statement goes on to say this is an affidavit from Jaquan Smith. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing his name correctly. He says in his statement, Jaquan Smith deposed and state as follows. 
My name is Jaquan Smith. His address is obviously blacked out for reasons. I am over the age of 18 years and I am fully competent to testify. I have firsthand knowledge of the facts in question that took place July 12, 2020. That is the basis of the above cited proceedings. I was the driver and bodyguard of Mr. Daystar Peterson, who is better known as Tory Lanes, in July of 2020. Mr. Peterson has been known to me for seven years. At the time of the incident, I had worked for Mr. Peterson for three years. He has not only been my employer, but I also consider him to be a close personal friend. On July 12, 2020, I was asked to drive Mr. Peterson to the home of Kylie Jenner, where Miss Megan Pete, better known as Megan the Stallion, and Kelsey Harris were present. Mr. Peterson was at Miss Jenner's home for approximately two hours when I received a call to come pick up Miss Pete and Miss Harris. He's referring to Meg the Stallion and Kelsey. Harris and myself left Miss Jenner's home, but I was asked by Miss Pete to return because she stated that she had forgotten a shoe. When we arrived at Kylie's home at this time, Miss Harris stayed in the car while Miss Pete exited. Megan did not enter the home at this time as she went around the back to the pool area where Tori was located. Both Meg and Tori returned to the car after a few minutes. Megan was bickering, but I am unsure of the exact words she was saying. She seemed upset. The four of us left Kylie's residence. As I began to drive, Meg started to fight with Tori. They were going back and forth. I remember Tori saying to Megan that he was going to tell Kelsey what was going on. I do not remember what street we were on, but Meg asked me to stop the vehicle. I did as she asked. Meg went to sit on a nearby bus stop. Tori went and spoke with Meg. And after about two minutes, they returned to the car, and I began driving again. Meg started the argument again, and Kelsey asked what was going on. Tori told her that he and Meg had been dating and were intimate. Meg, I'm sorry, Kelsey was upset by this, and as she and Tori had been dating in the same manner prior to any relationship with Meg. Meg and Kelsey began fighting. I pulled over to stop. Meg and Kelsey both got out of the vehicle and continued to fight, both verbally and physically. I broke up this fight and was pulling Meg toward the back of the car. I saw Kelsey with a pow-pow in her hand. Tori ran from behind Meg and myself toward Kelsey. Tori and Kelsey began struggling as Tori tried to unarm Kelsey Harris. I was still pulling Meg and did not see who actually fired the pow-pow. I was lucky I was not harmed, and in my opinion, Meg was also fortunate. The whole incident happened so quickly within just a couple of minutes. Now, this is very, very key evidence. Again, this is the first time we are directly reporting this on this particular channel. I just wanted to put these clear facts out there that, again, this is stated in the course, in the court document from the driver of the car who was a direct witness to what happened at the pool party, in the car, the incidents that happened in the car, and what happened after the car was stopped. 
Again, I am just reporting the facts that were just submitted into the court. Thank you again. This is from Mobs World. Thank you for putting this document online. If anything else follows up with this case, I will be back to report facts submitted to the to the courts concerning the Tory Lanes case versus State of California. Thank you guys. Be safe. Subscribe. Until next time, enjoy your day. Bye, guys.